Hello and welcome back to another video and it's been a long time coming but I'm finally going to show you around my Peugeot Boxer van build. So here's the tour. One of the things I haven't finished yet, the back doors, they still need cladding, but it's pretty much there. So to get the full width of the bed, as is common with these types of vans, I've managed to be able to cut the wall in here to give some extra width. So the actual width here is six foot four across here. So it's the biggest bed that I've had. It's 1.6 meters going this way and I've still got 50 mil of Celatex insulation behind this panel here. So it just shows how wide these types of vans are. As for the lighting, exactly the same as my other two vans. It just works so well and the switch is included on the actual light itself. So it makes wiring super easy and they're super bright as well. So the Max fan lives above the bed here and I'm still in two minds whether I like it there or not because when it's really windy it does make a bit of noise the wind passing over the cover on the outside of the fan but I thought I'd put it there to help with ventilation uh, when I'm sleeping because I didn't want condensation build up and on the slowest setting you can't even hear that that's on but it would just keep some airflow moving through the van. So all of the shelving that I have put in is made with live edge wood and I've just stained it up to the same colour as the roof, which is like a dark walnut. And it was just off of eBay, £50 for, I think it was five sheets of it, 1.8 metres long. And you just cut it up to the size that you want. And it looks really nice. So in the side door here, this is where the gas bottle lives. And there's the gas locker right there. With the gas bottle inside and down there you can see the dropout vent should this gas leak so I've made sure it's all done right and it's nice tight fit in there so it ain't going anywhere but that's where the gas lives this door here accesses the same as the side door it's got the fire extinguisher in the metal gas locker is there single run of pipe which is clipped in all the way around that just feeds the hob so i've built a very deep drawer here which i haven't managed to fill yet but it's still full of junk and that's on soft close runners there below that is the dometic crx 50 fridge not much in it at the moment and in this cupboard this is the whole control room for the whole electric system in the van and powering it all is a 180 amp hour Varta LFD battery. I have a shunt there which is Bluetooth to my phone so I can tell exactly how much power is coming out of the battery and it tells me how much is being powered by the solar panel and it completely monitors the battery and I know exactly how much is left in it. Above it I have the Solar Smart Charge Controller, another Victron product, Bluetooth again to my phone, and then the Orion TR Smart from Victron as well. That's my DC to DC charger. For when I'm driving, that keeps the battery charged. And again, that's Bluetooth to my phone. So I have total control from my phone, all of these pieces of equipment here. So here's the gas hob, 110 pounds off of Amazon. It comes supplied with LPG jets, so I've taken out the house gas jets, thrown them away, put the LPG jets in, and it works perfectly. To match that, I thought I would have a black sink as well, and that was off Amazon. So was the tap, and it's a pull-out tap that you can just pull out like that, and it retracts back in. That's the switch for the water pump, and you've got two styles. You've got the shower type of or you've got the direct like that. 
Now that all drains to the waste tank, which is underneath the van. And on the side of the van, I have a little tap that I can drain the waste whenever I need to. So along the bottom here, I've put stick on tiles from Amazon. And I'm really impressed with these. It looks really nice. So impressed. I'm thinking I might take this wood here out and uh, just put the tiles all the way up to the shelf right there. Oh, and I think we've been joined by a Dartmoor pony. Oh, yeah, we have. Underneath this seat here is some more storage and the water pump, which is a shore flow pump pretty standard it's got a filter on it and an accumulator to stop the pulsing from the pump now as you can see i've got the hose that runs to the tap and then this back hose runs right to the back of the van and allows me to have a shower attachment on the back of the van for washing down my mountain bike or even washing myself in the summer months when it's a bit warmer in this cupboard here is food storage and i can tell you now there's nothing in there apart from a tin of beans because of lockdown i haven't been able to go anywhere so literally you're just seeing it as i finish building it um, it all needs staining up a little bit in there to make it a little bit neater but that's where i will store some of my food and underneath here i have storage for the toilet just pull it out if you need to use it on this side Taking a cue from my first van, the Mavano, I've used this area to store my jackets and other bits and pieces, but there's still enough room to use the seat below. And inside the seat is the home of the diesel heater. And that's plumbed straight through the floor, just there. Hold here for the air intake. And then the air outlet is just here. And I've actually teed it off and put an air outlet into the garage area so it keeps the, underneath the bed warm as well. I thought I haven't done that in another van, so I thought I'd do it in this one. And as you can probably tell, I'm using red diesel because it's cheaper. So the wood that I've used for the seats is actually floorboard. So it all slots together and keeps everything nice and secure. So you may be wondering why I've decided to go for split seating because most people put a seat there so you can have a table in the middle and you sit opposite each other. Well, I did that in my old Renault Master and I didn't like it because I wanted a little sideboard next to the bed, which is exactly what I had in my first van, the Mavano, and it was just so handy. You can put your phone down there for charging. It's right next to the bed. Drinks can go on there next to the bed as well. And it was just so handy. So I put this little sideboard here to make things easier when you're in the bed. And not long after I built this seat, I knew I'd done the right thing because the amount of times I find myself sitting in it like I am now, got two armrests. The door is right opposite you so you can look out, look at the view. And even if the door's closed, you can sit next to the window and look out as well. And I just find myself just like lounging around in this part of the van. So I'm very happy with this. So on this panel here, I've built a little control panel. That is the diesel heater controller. And I've extended the wires to the controller to bring it onto this side of the van. And underneath it, I have four quick charge USB ports and they're touch sensitive. So you just touch it like that and it comes on. Now I have fitted LED strip lights underneath here, but you're gonna to struggle to see it. And yeah, you can just see them there. And I've put the controller inside this little box section here. So it's all nice and neat. And they go all the way along the underside and they also come along just there as well. And I can have those flashing or change the color from the remote control, which lives next to the bed just here. So the curtains I got from Kiravans and they are their standard blackout curtains. The kit comes with everything you need, the rails and the little bits that hold the curtains into the rails there. And they're stretchy, so they, they generally will fit most size windows. They come with the tie backs. So I've got three sets, so one for that window. I put one here for the cab so I can pull the curtain across at night. And then there's one in the side window as well.
and the two big curtains at the back was an Amazon purchase, 20 quid, and all I've done is just put copper piping as the rail to fit them, and then I could completely close off the back of the van at night, and it actually gets really cosy. So I have three black tape windows, one on the side here. I have two on the back, and then there is one on this side. Now, I paid a company to fit those for me because I messed it up on my last van in the Renault Master. So I've paid somebody to do that. It was Cornwall Van Windows. They supplied and fitted all of the windows. And I think it come to about 800 quid. Right, around the back here, the garage is exactly the same as in my old van. Two storage boxes above the wheel arches. All my junk thrown down one side. I also have built myself a slide out for the mountain bikes like that. So that comes in and out. Uh, makes it super easy to carry two mounted bikes and I've still got to build a little uh, cabinet here which will be out on sliders. There is the exit for the diesel heater to keep it warm underneath the bed here and if you probably just noticed Jackery have sent me this Explorer 500 so I'm going to cover that in another video and they sent me this solar panel to help charge that but that looks like a good bit of kit I'm very impressed with that but I'll cover that in another video soon. And as for the solar, I fitted one 270 watt panel and attached it to the van using Unistrut. So that is my Peugeot Boxer van tour. Now this van actually took me the longest to build out of any of my vans because I completely lost motivation right in the middle of the build. And it took, I had about four months where I didn't do anything to the van. I just had enough of it, but come lockdown in January 2021 I thought you know what I need to get this van finished so when lockdown finishes I can go out and enjoy the van and I'm very pleased with the way that it turned out I wasn't sure I was actually going to like the white walling but offset with the dark wood I'm really pleased with the way that it turned out so thank you for watching if you've got any questions or comments as usual put them in the comment section below if you've enjoyed it give it a thumbs up and I will see you in another video, probably in another four months when I can be bothered to actually make one. Uh, until then, take it easy.